Welcome to this part uh, on the introduction on Linux on the mainframe. My name is Philipp Bohne from Neu-Ulm University of Applied Sciences. When you look at the history of mainframe operating systems and different kinds of mainframe operating systems, you see that Linux is the youngest um, of the systems. It, uh, Linux on the mainframe started shortly after Linux appeared in the uh, end of the 90s and then here in the, in the most recent decade. So it's the youngest but still, or uh, nowadays, one of the most important beside ZOS because Linux um, has become very, very popular and it opened up the mainframe platform to bring a lot of the new challenging workloads like artificial intelligence and Docker and all this stuff on the mainframe platform. So today Linux is uh, regarding um, installations and sales uh, very important, probably um, beside ZOS the most important um, mainframe operating system. Before we look at Linux on the mainframe, just have a short look on what is Linux about, what is Linux at all. And uh, Linux is uh, a free operating system with free meaning open source. So um, free as in free speech, not as in free beer, as uh, Richard Stallman uh, said. So it's an open source operating system um, and uh, the source code is available and freely uh, usable and also modifiable. It's a Unix-like operating system. So Linux is not Unix, but it looks like Unix more or less and it behaves mostly like, like Unix. So you can think of Linux as a free re-implementation of, of the Unix system. And um, Linux is nowadays multi-threading, multitasking, uh, uh, capable and um, it's a multi-user operating system like, like the original Unix is. Um, it started in 1991 as a hobby project by the Finnish computer science student Linus Torvalds and um, then in the beginning um, it was more or less like a, a toy system but uh, very quickly it evolved and became very, very popular in 1992, for example. You already could download and install it as a complete distribution, as a complete system on your computer and really use it for normal work. So it very, very quickly became popular, first in the computer um, uh, science or, or IT people community, but then nowadays also um, for, for other people. And um, soon it also was adapted for commercial use for companies and uh, uh, the original Linux was written for the x86 uh, processor family. In these days it was the, the 8386 uh, 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 generation. Uh, so it, this was the first platform and it was originally not intended to be portable. But then the Linux kernel was re-engineered, modified and improved so it became more and more portable and nowadays um, Linux it has been ported to nearly all computer architectures that you can think of, some that you even can't think of because they are very exotic. So um, a lot of these ports are uh, official, some of them are of course only um, sort of research projects or, or tests or hobby projects, but um, there's a, a large list of architectures that Linux is officially supporting as part of the standard distribution of the standard kernel. Of course, not all of these are commercially relevant. Among the commercially relevant uh, ports, of course, the first, the most important one still is uh, x86 architecture. Um, but very close to it, of course, is the ARM. The ARM architecture is the architecture that is used in all embedded systems and in uh, mobile devices. Uh, and this, is, of course, is a large number of systems. And Linux is very common, very popular today in embedded systems as well. Then we have, for example, the power architecture by IBM and, of course, what we are interested in here is uh, the port to what is called in the Linux kernel S390 architecture, but in fact it is the set systems, but still in the, in the kernel it's called S390 in the code. So that is the port that we are looking at. And this port is still, is, is nowadays a, a full, uh, fully supported standard part of, of, of the standard Linux uh, development and standard Linux kernel. And what you see here is the, the Linux logo, you might know, the penguin and everything around Linux is typically associated with penguins. So we'll see that also when we have a look on the IBM uh, mainframes then. 
just a look back in history. So this is the first announcement of Linux in a use group. In these days there was not a uh, World Wide Web, so we had use groups, Usenet use groups, and this was Comp OS Minix. If Linus Torvalds announced that he had written a new operating system um, and it was probably, if you look at the importance of Linux for operating the world today, just think of mobile devices, cars and everything, um, then this is, is really uh, funny because um, probably he underestimated a lot the impact of what he had done. Uh, you can see, for example, uh, the last sentence where he says that um, it will probably never run on anything else than an x86 hardware because um, that's the only thing I have and uh, only support 80 hard disks and so on. So um, this was the beginning in 1991 and um, on the mainframe, then later it was ported also to the mainframe. This was also first a um, hobby effort by, by some people and then became a very important part of the, uh, of the Linux um, development. So Linux runs on the normal Z processors today. So it's nothing special about it. That's, that's important. Um, every processor of the mainframe of the Z14, for example, or any of these Z systems processors, every PU in theory is capable of executing and running Linux. So Linux is a normal mainframe operating system. Despite this, IBM is offering a special type of PU called the IFL, the Integrated Facility for Linux. And um, this is a PU which is um, by microcode, by firmware, um, reduced to execute Linux and Linux applications. And the difference is not that this is a different PU, but in, in hardware it's the same, but um, its uh, licensing model is different. So it will, it, this, this IFL will not execute, will not run, for example, ZOS, they will not run IBM uh, classical mainframe workloads, but um, they run Linux and everything running on Linux. And these CPUs or these, these PUs are licensed at a much lower price than the uh, standard CPs, despite they are physically the same chips, the same processors. Um, so this is uh, something about licensing and fees, not, not about uh, real technology. And um, so nowadays IBM is very strongly focusing on supporting Linux on the platform, on the mainframe, and also sees this as a strategic uh, uh, marketing activity to, to, um, to enlarge the basis of, of mainframe systems. And therefore they nowadays uh, sell and, and market the mainframe in two brands. Uh, one is the classical brand, the set systems brand, um, which is the, what we would call the mainframe in a classical way. So it has uh, all kinds of PUs and of course runs ZOS and, and other mainframe operating systems. Also in set systems, you can have IFL PUs, IFL CPUs, um, to run Linux and ZOS in one box. But nowadays IBM is marketing a second product line, which is called Linux One. These are physically the same machines, but they have a different branding, also a different, uh, a different uh, front. So there's a, as you can see here, there's an orange stripe on the front to indicate that. And these machines are normal mainframes, but all CPUs are IFLs, so um, in these systems you can run only Linux. This is a Linux-only mainframe. And with this system, priced at a different price level as well, um, the idea is to enlarge the basis of installed mainframe systems to new workloads, to new applications. On this uh, photograph you can see on the left-hand side, this is a classical set 13 mainframe. On the right-hand side, it's a smaller model, in this case as a Linux One box. This is why I put the penguin here. And the Linux One boxes, um, they are called uh, Rockhopper and Emperor, so uh, these are penguin, uh, types of penguins. If you look at the classical or full-fledged mainframe, you could or you would usually have uh, Linux in a separate LPA. So we will have, or you would have typically a ZOS LPA. And then we could have either Linux running natively in an LPA on its own, which is not so common. Mostly people run Linux guests as virtual guests on a ZBM hypervisor um, because you can very easily create new Linux instances and maintain the instances um, on top of such a software virtualization um, tool. The question of course is what, what can you do with Linux for, for the mainframe? 
and uh, why, why Linux is interesting. So Linux opens up the mainframe to new applications, to new workloads. So on the, on the mainframe, you can, with Linux, you can run basically everything that, that you can run um, on um, any other Linux. Okay? So Linux on set systems is a regular, normal Linux. This means that it usually behaves like Linux on every platform and all the software and tools typically work. If you have applications that have dependencies to a certain architecture, for example, assembler code, then of course you have to ad uh, adapt that or modify that when you port it to another Linux uh, architecture, but this is the same as if you would port it uh, to any other Linux architecture that, that Linux supports. But an application that is written in a higher language that can just be compiled would be uh, just recompile on their platform and then you're done. Or if you use Java, you can just run the Java code there. Um, Linux for that is a first class citizen. It's a, it's a fully supported standard part of the kernel and um, it's also an important port for, for the platform. It allows to run um, nearly everything that you would usually expect on a Linux server, like for example web hosting, the LAMP stack, Apache, MySQL, PHP. You could run the whole Java universe with Java or Jakarta EE applications, with Java web applications. Um, you can run um, uh, Apache Spark and all the Apache projects. Um, some things can only be run on Linux on the mainframe, for example, the Oracle database system is uh, only available on Linux for the mainframe, not on ZOS, and also the SAP application servers uh, for the ERP or CRM or other SAP solutions um, called the NetWeaver application server is available for Linux on system set. Okay? Um, despite this, of course, Linux opens up now uh, a, new, uh, a new range of applications to the mainframe, in particular those coming from the cloud and um, internet world, like for example cloud hosting solutions, OpenStack, Kubernetes, um, containerization, Docker containers, all these no SQL databases like uh, MongoDB and, and Hadoop file systems and so on. And of course, last, last but not least, um, blockchain, something that's really uh, highly uh, discussed at the moment. And there's the open source Hyperledger framework. Hyper, uh, Hyperledger is an open source implementation basis for, for implementing blockchain applications. And this, for example, runs very well on uh, the Linux mainframes. And um, the interesting thing about this is that due to the, to the uh, high vertical scalability of the mainframe, meaning that you could scale up the system with a large number of CPUs, um, you can implement applications that don't need uh, to be run on a distributed cluster. Of course, the internet technologies have been designed to run on distributed clusters, but um, if you put them on a large mainframe, you can avoid having all this overhead for administrating uh, uh, a large bunch of different servers to run, for example, a Hadoop system or um, any kind of these um, big data applications or a Kubernetes installation. A few words on Linux distributions for the mainframe. And um, what is a Linux distribution? So uh, people usually use Linux with a distribution. A distribution is a combination of Linux operating system, its tools, its um, libraries and um, core applications together with user applications and administration tools to, for example, to install and maintain packages. And these distributions are the typical way in which people use uh, Linux. So people use Linux not by compiling everything themselves, but they get such kind of distributions. Some of these distributions are free, some have commercial support. Officially, for a mainframe, uh, IBM supports three distributions that where commercial support is available. This is Ubuntu, um, SUSE uh, Linux Enterprise Server and Red Hat Linux. And um, these uh, three are those that usually companies would use because they need or they usually want commercial support and maintenance. But this does not mean that any other Linux compiled for S390 doesn't run on the, on the machine. So 
in principle, of course, you can run Debian and everything else as well. So these uh, distributions are only that what is officially supported. Thank you very much.